So, uh, hi, uh, my name is Jasim Hindi and I'm an artist. Uh, I work mainly with performance and um, I started as a sound designer and, and a musician. But since then I've done mostly, uh, I've thrived in the performance world. And a lot of my practice is quite hybrid uh, between uh, different fields and specialties. And a good chunk of the work I have done and of the things I've learned uh, on the field were done with uh, Mia Habib, who's uh, my partner and collaborator. And also uh, for the purpose of this project, we are co-curating um, this uh, series of events. Yes, yeah, ma yeah, exactly. So yeah, as you said, I'm Mia Habib and uh, I work um, inside of the field of uh, the performing arts. Uh, I come from dance and choreography and uh, have worked in partnership with Jassem for very long. Yeah. For how long actually? To, like maybe 14 years? Yeah. 13 years? Something like this. We met in 2007. Yeah. So what does that? 17, 18, 19. That, that just it's says that we're really years. bad at math. That's what yes, it says. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, um, so we were invited, uh, actually initially I think you were invited by uh, a combination between Claudin and uh, Trapp, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To uh, curate a um, sort of a series of events. Um, and then you asked me if I wanted to jump on that ship. Right? This is how it happened. Yeah, it's how it happened. Because I think this is also a bit how we work somehow. That, that we, from we met in 2007, and I guess we'll come back to how we met. Yep. Um, I feel that it's also very much about kind of taking what comes and bring it into our collaboration somehow. And, um, and for me, it made a lot of sense. Uh, for this project where we were invited or I was asked to to uh, set up a series of works that would happen in, in public space uh, addressing a kind of a general audience but specifically also youth um, and thinking of kind of my history with art in public space is also so connected to our collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's how we met, more or less. Um, it, it was a series of uh, joyful but unfortunate circumstances. Uh, we were... Uh, Mia met uh, me in a squat in Paris, or an apartment in Paris, I don't remember, one of the two. And I was uh, playing music for a performance series in a bathtub. And then apparently that was a good thing. I don't know. And uh, so we did a we did a uh, we did a video performance together in a squat in Paris. Um, and then a couple of months later, I got a phone call from uh, Cecilia Lindemann Stiens, who was our producer at the time, who was your producer, and asked me if I wanted to if I was free the next month to jump on a plane, go to Madagascar and perform with Mia and Rani. And of course I said yes, I mean, who says no? Uh, and uh, yeah, and then from there we actually started to develop uh, projects together. And really from the beginning, we were absolutely not interested in working in studios for this project, of course, not forever, but just for our collaboration. And immediately I think we started working uh, yeah, in the strangest environments or like environments where you wouldn't find a performance or, or dance, even though we were invited by uh, artists that also were curating. So in a way, there's a bit of a mirror of what we're doing now and how other people invited us, specifically for things like this, where I remember we were once in Morocco and we got invited by uh, En Marche like, uh, and they asked us, um, would you like, where would you like to perform? And we said, oh, there's this destroyed palace building. Can we just make a performance in the corridor? And then half of the performance was us just cleaning the floor, going back and forth while the 
audience was going in. And it was always, it's always been things like this. I mean, there's like, I don't know, countless examples. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, completely. And also <clears throat> to say that the third person, Rani, that you mentioned is Rani Nair yeah. uh, from Sweden. And I think the three of us really thought that or felt that there is in a way all this potential in going to spaces that are kind of in one way working against you, but also with you when it comes to to performance um, and where in a way, yeah, nothing is um, put out for you. Nothing is ready made and nothing is, is kind of, uh, yeah, you have you have to do everything yourself somehow. And also this thing of dealing with an environment that actually is alive. It changes, yeah. it is unpredictable, it, it surprises you. Um, so kind of the, the, I think what became more and more of our message with Rajas Amrani and myself is right this thing of um, of how do we stay flexible and how do we um, meet all these changes in the environment, but also kind of insist on something. Yeah. And then we we our group we we found in 2007 when we went to Madagascar, and uh, this is how we really got to know each other. Uh, so later on, we we named ourselves. I think we insist. Yeah. Uh, which was an art project that we had for many, many years. Yeah, it was many years of experimentation in this sort of like... I mean, it's true that we came from performance, but the second you start working outside of theater venues, then there's a sort of like a, a you know background noise of politics. There's always like a relationship to like the social fabric that surrounds you uh, and I think we were immediately interested in that but we weren't trying to make a, it as our thematic but it was, it was just that we were always taking it into account yeah. and I mean some were very obvious like we worked on a on the border between uh, Mexico and the United States of America and you know things like this that were like very political spaces like very charged uh, but some others were not that obvious and it was still, despite whatever we wanted to do, it was always uh, like a companion in a way. So, um, and yeah, I think also one of the reasons why we're mentioning this is because um, the invitation from uh, Claude and Trapp, we have worked also with Trapp for some time before they have produced uh, very well, I have to say, <laughs> some of our more difficult projects. And so we also really appreciate or understand how how difficult or how articulate you must be and how resourceful you have to be as an artist if you're working outside of the net and outside of the sort of, you know, custom-made houses for for performance. I feel like I'm talking a lot now. No, no, it's great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, like with, with Trap, uh, they produced uh, a tour that we did in the north of Norway. And that's how, uh, I think we call it We Insist Nur, did yeah, we? Yeah. Um, where we went to several places in the north with the We Insist. Um, and I guess, I mean, even for me who grew up in Norway, um, I, okay, I had visited the north before, but I think if you haven't spent a lot of time in the north, uh, you, you don't really know what, what it is. Yeah. And I think through our travels and work, which then was, of course, about going into the social environment, um, we fell a bit in love with the north. Yes. Uh, and so every time we brainstorm <laughs> a new project and we're like trying to, yeah, where are we going? And we kind of just end up um, yes. in the north somehow. Finmark. Thin mask, yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I, and I think uh, because of that, I mean, of course, we have some experience of what it means to be working in the field, but this is a really, uh, you cannot exhaust that. I mean, it it's, it's would be very pretentious to say that we know everything about it. Can I shoot in when you say yeah. in the field, you mean Yeah, I mean outdoors. working outdoors, like yeah. outside of the... the theater uh, but so we we appreciate it's not that we know anything about it really but we we do appreciate 
when the invitation coming from institutions, you know, ha is is sensitive to to that and to not just the challenges but also just the way of working and the way to organize, which is a little bit different from the regular, you know, mm. producer, technician, etc. I think. Mm. Uh, even though those things come into account. Mm. So, yeah, and I think when we were in, invited by, or when you were invited, and then I jumped in uh, by Claude and, 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 and Trapp, it was really, it was really great for us to be able to, you know, support other people that are doing that and ask them questions that we wanted to be asked to, uh, that, wait, how do you say that? Ask them the questions. I don't know how to say that. Uh, Ask them the questions that we wanted to be asked. Does in a way, I think, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't because know. Ma maybe it's also this thing that uh, it's a conversation I feel we've been in, uh, especially since 2018, because 2017 and 18 we did this project where we went back to the north, right? And we traveled in a, in a caravan, uh, performing in people's houses, performing in exchange for a dinner. Um, and that was a performance, and it was our field work, and it was um, our rehearsal time. So all those processes, which I think we are very interested in doing, all the processes of, of th that they, they can go simultaneous. Yeah, absolutely. And I think after that, we named more and more the difference of kind of making a performance and just putting it outdoors versus this thing of actually working in this weaving uh, between these very different layers in the landscape and, and, yeah. uh, and in the people. And I, in the programming also now with, for Trapp and Kluden, I think it's also this that we kind of looked also at projects that maybe in one way or the other can weave, weave with... Um, um, a certain segment of the city or a certain environment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the idea was also that um, it's always easier. Okay, this is, I mean, we're not professional curators, you know, so we don't know exactly what we're, mi we, we, we don't know what we don't know, basically. But uh, we also, um, we felt that as artists, we could s support projects that are already existing instead of pretending that we could invent a new frame. And of course, Claudin and, and Trapp, the initiators of that project, in a way built a frame around it and made some very, very strong proposals at the beginning. But the way we could uh, formulate the invitation for the artist on behalf of Trapp and Claudin was to be able to say, okay, but as artists from the outdoors, uh, we know, we think we know at least what kind of questions we would like to be asked to us, and then we could transmit that to others. So, for instance, the kind of, I know I'm repeating myself right now, but some of the projects, for instance, already existed fully. They've been mm. like produced and everything and ready to go on stage. But we, and there were, some of them were actually made for stage specifically. I'm thinking actually of um, Maritea's Maritea. project. <clears throat> but we had this feeling that that was not, that there was something else there and that we could actually ask her the question and see if she'd be interested in diverting that into, you know, the great outdoors. And actually when we asked her, she revealed that a lot of the work she had done was with in mind this idea of working outside. So we weren't completely off the mark. Some other projects, it was much more obvious. I mean, they were designed to, to, to be made uh, outdoors. But the idea is that it's always great to be able to support ongoing projects of uh, artists rather than, you know, mm -hmm. not rather than, but as much as it is interesting to, you know, force them into a new frame, it's also really exciting to just, you know, call a fellow artist and say, hey, what are you doing right now? Would you like to do it in a different frame mm. without having to manipulate you know without interfering with their process mm. basically because this is something yeah that uh, we also have found very important when we have been working like how would would an institution or funding body actually uh, support the ongoing research and the ongoing artistry that 
we as artists are already doing. So it's a kind of a, a deepening into what we're already busy with instead of kind of having to to just yeah. jump from project to project. Yeah, and interrupt our thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, of course, there's, you know, there's, there's good and bad in both, for sure. Yeah. But for that yeah. specific, the way the question was asked to us, we knew that we could, that we could call specialists of the social fabric. You know, artists that we know, their specialty is that specific kind of textile, you know, that is like, you know, politically, symbolically, historically charged material uh, that can, that, and, and they're specialists of this kind of like, yeah, you know, building, you know, interfering in a public space, yes, but also knowing how to weave between like the, the qualities and the tension within a, within a specific locality, for instance, uh, and the way to make research in an efficient way and in an articulate way that is not, I would say, journalistic in the worst sense of the word, of course, or sociologist, you know, not to pretend to be either of those things, but just really how an artist, like a, a craftsperson, can interfere in that fabric mm -hmm. in a very minimal but very efficient way. Yeah. I mean, minimal not so much with the, for instance, uh, some of the artists we invited are not minimal at all, and that's why we invited them too. <laughs> but, but maybe uh, how you weave into that fabric also in a soft way, maybe, yeah. or that there are certain soft interventions or um, listening interventions or uh, artists that are kind of uh, interested in looking at what what is produced in that encounter somehow. Absolutely. Um, and also, so so yeah, we have kind of in a way, five different artists or groups. Um, and like you said, like they do it very differently. Like there is, um, you mentioned Maritea, Maritea Dalin, where it kind of came very clearly from a performance that was already made. And then what does it mean in a way to, to take this research? And then for her, it also, she will go with the research she's into now. And what does it mean to develop this in dialogue with people and surroundings. Um, but then a kind of a different invitation was, um, or is uh, the group De Naiva and uh, Rosa Mostagi, where they made a piece called Hoop uh, during Corona, which is already a piece made for kind of um, uh, interventions in public space. Um, and then a question for us with that piece, for example, would be, okay, how can you, how can we invite this piece again as, as you know, what it already is in a way, but how, what would this piece be if the participants, for example, are not professional dancers, but that the piece adapts itself um, to a mix of maybe some of them are dance students, maybe um, other people are uh, local youth that are interested in dance. So this idea we try to look at also as yeah. where is our uh, target group of audience? That the target group doesn't necessarily have always to be people watching, but also bodies participating. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's this difference between, uh, you know, what is usually called uh, artist intervention in a public space, which basically is just, you know, a way to stop a flow or, you know, make people question mm. what they're doing. But, and I think the artists we, we invited are not people who are necessarily doing that, but more people who are actually just participating to what is already here mm. and just, just lifting a few strands since we're in this fabric metaphor. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, like lifting a few strands of things that are already here. Like, for instance, mm. very clearly, yeah, with, with, with the hoop, this idea of just, there are things that are already in potential already here and then to just activate it a little bit more and like just open a few doors for people but without you know forcing it or, or advertising too much and I think also Claudin and Trapp were you know very good at understanding that like sort mm. of like soft you know you know f yeah charming mm. the audience rather than just pushing their buttons mm. although uh, we have also invited um, 
uh, people that we love a lot that come from a place called Elska, which is uh, Princess Silicious and uh, Gutta, mm. uh, who are a group of uh, two separate group of artists that are both working in the drag world and in the uh, folk drag world also, and are ve also very interested in transmission, and also in like just you know making fun of people in a great mm. way. And there's like there's a very complex and articulate joke, let's say, that is happening there. But it's also like a special kind of craft uh, mm -hmm. that is really uh, beautiful and and really can bring the best out of uh, people. And it's an easy, it's it's a it's a not easy. It's a it's a it's a great excuse for people mm -hmm. to just slide into it uh, mm -hmm. as an audience. And it's also really great when it doesn't happen just behind closed doors or in clubs but that you can actually just access it by mistake so that's mm -hmm. what i mean by easy that like and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a huge drag queen ball and you're extremely you know you're so happy that this could happen you didn't have to make the effort to go there we just you know kind of brought it to you mm. uh, so to also like yeah sneak mm. people in without them knowing mm. uh, them being the public of course and also in no. that invitation, I, I think we thought it was also exciting to think of like these layers of community. So there are uh, uh, also this uh, Gutt and Prince Licious is in one way part of a community, but at the same time working uh, separately. So also what yeah. happens when um, certain families in a way of a community uh, start to inter interact or exchange? I guess this interaction yeah. is already there, but to kind of set up some frameworks that maybe even sparks some conversations that will keep on going without us. So I think we tried yeah. to think also in long lines. Yeah, 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 it's very minimal curation in that sense. I mean, we're not, you know, trying to... I mean, one thing also in terms of locations and the, the kind of audience we were working with uh, in relation to the artists we invited, there was also this, I think, quite firm uh, this position from me and I, which was to say we're not trying to experiment with people. Uh, mm. We're not. We're, this is not about doing an experimentation, uh, and we're not here to help anyone. It's mm. it's really about what is already here. And for instance, when we also invited um, the people from Text Lab in a quite uh, a large uh, invitation, like with a big, res a lot of responsibilities for them, mm -hmm. but they they have really solid shoulders, but to also just help them continuing their work and supporting what they are already doing, mm -hmm. because they are specialists of what they are doing, mm -hmm. instead of trying to experiment with their actions and bring mm -hmm. them in a place where, you know, there, there would just be mm -hmm. a, a huge hiatus between their practice mm -hmm. and the people they're working with. And instead of doing that, Along with Cluden and, and Trapp, we just decided to okay, let's let's keep supporting them in the way that they are doing things instead mm. of you know messing around with their things. And also there, I think with with a, a project like Text Lab, which has, as you say, very wide shoulders, has a super long and deep experience with community work and with working with youth and and uh, connecting um, youth that is not already inside of the arts with um, also artists from the professional world and they have a very long and I would say systematic uh, or methodological way of doing this. So um, for us, yeah, it was like you say, important not to kind of, uh, rather to feed into that. Um, and then also uh, connected to that, which I guess we will say something more about later, is this where in Oslo, what are the places? and the invitation from Trapp and Cluden was also this idea that we're actually looking for events that can happen in, in all parts of Oslo. And I yeah. think that was exciting to think about. Yeah, and, that was a great part, yeah. So. And then, yeah, just to say with, with Text Lab, for us, um, for example, when we were talking about a place like uh, Töyen, where Text Lab is already working, they work in many different parts of Oslo, uh, this experience of, of looking at what is, has been happening in Töyen, where you see art projects kind of flying in, landing, working for some weeks and, and looking really good because they're really doing a social work and then kind of just leaving. Yeah. Um, and we thought we will just be the same if, if we just do it uh, in, in, in that way of just kind of inventing a project. 
So then to look at who are already there, present at Tøyen, and working over a long period of time. Yeah. And TextLab is doing that. So yeah. I think it was also really feeding into like how, how do we f support those lines in a way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just smiling because we also use the complete opposite strategy of what we just said now yeah. <laughs> with other parts of the city where we thought maybe you need, you know, like you need, little, you need to wake up a, a little, little bit. shock. Like, yeah, just like, yeah. I mean, of course, these are, you know, you know, geography is a lot about cliche when it comes to like, you know, socioeconomics and in many ways it's very complicated layers. But at the same time, there was something quite symbolic about some areas that were chosen. Yeah. And so we also try to find, you know, gestures that were also really symbolically charged to be able to kind of, you know, you know, I don't know, hunt it, <laughs> you know, hunt some neighborhoods. And uh, for instance, one of the artists we, we, we chose, which is uh, Liam El Zafari, uh, who is an artist who works with, um, um, really works a lot with public spaces and is doing this beautiful projects with neon lights, which you will see. Uh, that has already started. So this is also something that has mm -hmm. that is already existing, and we're basically trying to just follow his his desire. But it's true that we we really try to support his work in areas where it wouldn't per be perceived as a provocation, but that there would be a need for an understanding of like how to practice differences or how to mm. manipulate the public field and bring them somewhere unexpected. And so we were also able to exactly like depart from this idea that like the, the areas of Oslo that are traditionally used by experimental art and try to spread that around the city, you know, to have like, you know, something in West Oslo that is a little bit more provoking to the audience rather than trying to provoke people in areas where they're constantly provoked by everything, not just art, but also, you know, social pressure and yeah. maybe the police and, you know. So instead of doing that, we try to really do this kind of like, you know, gentle doctor. You know, like, something more inclusive, Yeah, more maybe? inclusive and more with what is already there. Like really just follow the line of tensions in, in, the, in, the, in the city. So mm. we've learned a lot also uh, from that. Um, yeah, that's been very exciting, I think. Um, and um, now we, t we already talked about uh, um, Maritea, and we talked about Hoop, uh, Rosa Marstagi. Uh, we talked about uh, Gutta and Prince Licious, and we talked about uh, Liam, and, and we talked, talked about, about Text Lab. Lab. Yes. So we have to make sure, but uh, inside of Text Lab, um, actually, there are in a way two projects. So there is, uh, because TextLab is doing a lot of very different projects, so uh, we spent also, for us it's been really interesting, I think, that we spent time also understanding what other projects and initiatives and artists in Oslo are actually doing in order yeah. to understand their practice so that our invitation in a way could make sense. So with TextLab, um, they have a project called the TextLab Unge Stemmer, um, and that is the, the part of the project that will happen in Tøyen under the navigation and direction of uh, a, a great performance artist, dancer, uh, Hanna Mjåvatten. Uh, and Text Lab Unge Stemmer, the way we understand it, is, is also an initiative where um, uh, you kind of follow and, and um, build the voice of each uh, participant into um, an independent artistic voice in a way, but that can also be, be through communal work. So that's kind of what um, we will be excited to see in Tøyen. Yeah. And then the other part of TextLab that we have invited is this program they have called TextLab Lab Incubator, um, where they are uh, inviting in and working with an um, artist that already has kind of started yeah. their direction of yeah, I mean, making. Also how that started is that the artists from Incubator were people we were interested in to promote and and curate. We really wanted those people regardless of you know in a way of text lab or not. We just liked them as artists. But then we realized that there is already a group of you know producers and curators and enablers in text lab that are doing that job. 
So instead of you know, doing it instead of them, we just said, hey, there's this bunch of artists that you are you know, supporting really well and that you have, you know, are, have a strong partnership with. So instead of us taking their place, we just said, hey, why don't you do it? You know? mm. um, and that, that was actually really exciting because then there was a really interesting yeah, uh, way to you know, s- yeah, just participate instead of you know, yeah. uh, taking away. In a way. <laughs> and, and that's also going to be exciting because it will take place in uh, Cloden Pilot. Yeah. So, and Cloden Pilot is also, I mean, uh, I've, I've been there now uh, looking into it uh, while it was being built and just now when it was finished. And it, it's a stage that's going to stay for a few years. Uh, it's uh, built by, uh, yeah, it's connected to Cloden, <laughs> Cloden Theater. Uh, and so Incubator Project is going to go in there to Cloden Pilot. Um, so I think it's also exciting that um, Cloden Pilot has already started in a way, but I also feel that there is still a lot of audience that hasn't met yeah. that space. Um, and it's a great space. I'm a little bit envious almost. Like it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm... Um, Don't I say I'm excited. Well, uh, what, but <laughs> I am excited. I'm just kidding with you. I feel I'm very often excited <laughs> I'm about excited. many things, but yeah. this I'm very excited no, about. No, I think, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and it's also, we don't know what's going to happen. No, and that's what's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think also because that's kind of the core of a bit of what we also work with. So it's true. It's also setting up yeah. invitations where we know that we will maybe be really surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's like low pressure in, for them, hopefully. <laughs> and that it's just fun to be able to, to, to do that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna go watch it. But, uh, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> it was nice to talk with you, Jasem, because we oh, so we're nice together to almost every day, <laughs> and we work a lot together. But yeah. uh, we we never sit down and talk like this. Actually, so that's tack true. For yes, yeah, yeah. Tack for a new, me, yeah, yeah. A new prat together. <laughs> you can cut this part. Just kidding. I'm yeah. trying to make a round. No, okay, okay. Oh, you want to round it up? Yeah. No, no, no. But maybe this is. Uh, Thank you.